Hey, GED students, Brandon sent us this expression on the Light and Salt Learning Facebook page. And I thought I'd give it a try because what Brandon was struggling with wasn't so much the order of operations, but rather signs, uh, the negative signs here, the minuses. And that is an issue that a lot of students have and the GED does tend to fa uh, favor negative numbers when it gives you these order of operations kind of problems these expressions with more than one operation that you're supposed to simplify uh, they like ones with negatives so let's give it a try okay um, so first of all if you had something like this where all you had to do was just do these computations it would be on the non calculator section so we're gonna do it by hand and then what I want you to notice here is that we have an expression with more than one operation. I mean, look, we have exponents, we have subtraction, we have these two parentheses shoving, shoving things together, meaning we have multiplication going on. So whenever you have more than one operation to perform in mathematics, you need to refer to the order of operations. The order of operations tells you what comes first, second, third, fourth, I hear a lot of students when we talk about the order of operations saying, this is PEMDAS, this is PEMDAS. Uh, yeah, PEMDAS is one way to remember the order of operations. It's not my favorite way, though. I use Gemma because there's four steps to the order of operations. First, you deal with the inside of groupings. Then you deal with exponents. Um, so insides of groupings. Yes, parentheses are one of the kinds of groupings, but certainly not the only kind. Okay, then exponents, which include radicals and roots or I should say, which include radicals and powers. Uh, then we have multiplication and its inverse division. That's the same step. And then finally, addition and its inverse subtraction, same step. All right, so first thing we should go looking for is groupings. Let's pick up a different color so we can see what we're doing here. And I do see some numbers happening inside a grouping. In this case, it is inside of parentheses. So that's where I'm going to start. 7 minus 9. Now, a lot of people would put 2 here, but be careful. I'm starting with 7, like having $7. And then I'm taking away 9. And you say, well, that can't really happen. You don't have enough. Well, it happens all the time in life with your bank account. You got $7 and you spend 9 You know what's going to happen? You're going to be in debt. You're going to be down two dollars all right um so that is what i get there now be careful though um this thing was in a grouping that was shoved up against these parentheses here so this these uh, parentheses were being used for two purposes these ones right here they were being used to group seven minus nine but they're also being used to group this multiplication so i'm not going to drop them i still need those parentheses I still need the times two because I haven't used it yet. Uh, and then I still need all this. I haven't touched it at all. So five squared minus. All right. So I did the inside of groupings. There's nothing left to do inside of the groupings. Next thing I'm supposed to do is any exponents. So I do see an exponent here. Now, if you're a savvy GED student, you might be saying, hey, Kate, I could have done this exponents at the same step as I did the grouping uh, because the numbers aren't shared. And that's fine. You, you're right. You could have. Since the two expressions, 5 squared and 7 minus 9, shared no numbers, didn't touch, you could have done them on the same step. Okay but I'm just being a little anal. So let's hit 5 squared up. So 5 squared is 25. And that's the only exponent here. So again, I'm just going to be a little anal and drop everything else to do it on the next step, just so you can see me doing it step by step. Now, next thing to do is any multiplication. And I do have multiplication here. Notice this number in parentheses shoved up against this number in parentheses. So what I'm being asked to do is negative 2 times 2, negative 2 times 2. Well, a negative uh, times a positive here, If we basically the idea here is if we just have one negative sign, it's going to stick around when we multiply. It's like I owe you two dollars two times. Well, if I borrow two dollars from you and then borrow another two dollars from you, guess what? I'm going to owe you a total of four dollars. Now, careful, careful, careful. I want you to keep this number in parentheses. Reason why is because a lot of students here will drop a negative sign. And I think that's what Brandon did. And I think that's what 90% of you would do right here. You would see that negative in front of negative four and you'd be totally happy and say, oh, that's 25 minus four. It's not. The negative four came from right here. 
you still have this minus sign you haven't touched yet. So if you haven't used it, it needs to drop. You say, well, but Kate, what in the world does that even mean? Minus, minus, we'll deal with it in just a second. So I'm gonna drop the 25 I haven't used either. And now let's look at this. So it says 25 minus negative four. And you might be thinking, well, what the heck? How am I supposed to minus a negative number? Well, let's think about it this way. One way to think about uh, negatives is the word opposite. In fact, I think that's my favorite way when I have double negatives going on because it helps me to make sense of this. So basically what I'm saying here is I'd like you to do the opposite of subtracting four or the opposite of negative four. Well, what's the opposite of subtracting four or the opposite of negative four? It's plus four. So weirdly, even though it says 25 minus negative four, this is totally and completely equivalent or equal to taking 24, 25 and adding four to it. Okay, so two minus signs in a row, well, that's the same as addition. And then finally, I do get 29. All right, so that's a simplified expression. Um, if that was good for you, just go ahead and turn the video off. But let me just talk to the people who say, Kate, that doesn't make sense. That subtracting a negative four would be the same as adding four. And I just want to talk about a little bit how that does make sense. So subtracting a negative number. Okay, if you're a single mom like I was for 14 years, then you've probably gone negative in your bank account. So I want you to imagine that you had a fee on your bank account. They charged you $4. So this is a $4 charge. You know, if you had a $4 charge, you'd go negative $4. You'd go down $4. Okay, uh, but you're poor, you have no money, you need to buy diapers, you need to buy groceries, you call the bank, you start crying. I might have done that once or twice myself. You say, you know what, I cannot pay this fee, it's not my fault, it's because my paycheck didn't go through when it should have, da 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 and the bank says, okay, we will take off the fee. I'll say that again, we will take off the fee. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna subtract, they're gonna take off that negative four, that fee. Well, guys, what's going to happen to your bank account balance if they take off the $4 fee they charged you? Well, it's going to go back up $4, okay? So subtracting a negative is like taking off a fee. Your account will end up going back up. And so that's why subtracting a negative is the same as adding. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, just drop it in the comments and I would be happy to answer it.